eligibility. Uh, eligibility for the grant is really wide ranging. We accept applications for our masters and pre-dissertation doctoral students from across the university. So it's across disciplines, departments, professional schools, pretty much anybody doing research in Latin America, um, regardless of discipline or, or department is eligible to apply for this. Um, and all of you are in fields that we traditionally set, see applications from, but we also get people from biological sciences who study, you know, butterflies in Costa Rica, who take this money and go to Costa Rica to study butterflies there. So it's really pretty open. Um, it is for field work in Spanish or Portuguese speaking countries of Latin America and the Caribbean, excluding Puerto Rico. Uh, I should note these are not guidelines that class has enforced. Um, this is from the funder, the Tinker Foundation, uh, but that means we aren't able to offer funding for Puerto Rico or for people who work in Haiti to go to Haiti or any English speaking countries in Latin America or the Caribbean. Um, the founder of the Tinker Foundation was really about Spanish and Portuguese speaking Latin America and therefore those are the guidelines we get from them. Uh, citizens of Latin American countries are eligible to conduct research in their home country if they have no previous research experience there. Um, and they're also eligible to conduct research in other countries. But, uh, but if you are Colombian and you'd like to be doing research in Colombia, you shouldn't have previous research in Colombia. Um, I should notice, note that, I mean, the, the focus of this grant is to provide students with their um, with very early research experience, regardless of what, where you're a citizen of, the idea is that you don't have a lot of experience and this is, you know, one of your first couple of times in the field. Um, and, and that's really what the Tinker wants to be funding, which is why uh, it's for pre-dissertation field work and then master's field work. Uh, and then funds have to be utilized by December of this year. Um, there could be extensions to this, depending on how the pandemic plays out. Uh, but we have more hope about people traveling this summer than we have over the past couple of years. We do have some grantees who have traveled in the past couple of years, but there were a lot of postponements as you all can expect or would anticipate. Uh, but this year we really do think um, that it should be used by December of, of 2022. Um, purpose of the Tinker Field Research Grant. The primary purpose, and I just want to underscore this, is to support travel costs related to this field research. Uh, that means, and we'll go over, but that means, you know, it means your transportation, air and ground, it means your lodging, it means some meals. Um, uh, uh, visas to get to the country. You can put into your proposal some field related expenses, uh, including minor research expenses. Uh, but the vast majority of the money you should be asking us for should be about getting you to the field and supporting your existence in the country and what you're doing your field work. Um, so field related expenses, those research expenses should be a smaller part of your overall grant proposal. Uh, and I can tell you, even if you put them in, um, a lot of times the, the committee, which is made up of faculty members are going to focus our award on the amounts that it's costing you uh, to, to travel to and stay in the country. And so often, you know, we might have a student who asks for four thousand um, dollars to go somewhere of which you know a thousand dollars is field related expenses but in, in all likelihood the grant's only going to be twenty five hundred or three thousand dollars and it's really going to focus on on those actual travel expenses um, i note here that the purchase of field equipment is prohibited and there's a little asterisk here it's normally prohibited but right now there is a little bit more flexibility and i'll get to that in a second um, so uh, we have more allowed expenses this year uh, than in normal years. I call this allowed expenses pandemic edition. Um, this has been true since 2020. The Tinker Foundation opened up the ability to do a little bit more with the funds than we had in the past. Um, and this is again, uh, so students can actually, you could apply to do field research in country as well as some virtual research. Um, so this year you're still allowed to put in a line item for access to digital resources. Um, you can also uh, put in some money for access to primary documents, books or subscriptions. If you're buying books, they should be books that are only available in the country you're going to study in, not books you could easily buy off of Amazon here in the US. Um, if you need to buy some software for your research, you can put that into your budget now. Uh, and this is where the asterisk comes in. Um, it used to be you couldn't buy any kind of hardware equipment, but now, 
uh, in, for, for this year's grantees, you can do so if the total doesn't exceed $200. So you're not gonna be buying fancy cameras or anything, but if you could buy some recording equipment that would be less than $200, you can actually put in a line item for that now. Um, you can put in, you can request funds for transcription, translation and interpretation services. Compensation for local collaborators at the field research site. Um, you know, this has happened sometimes when people, uh, you know, in certain fields, it's normal to pay interviewees uh, for their time and you can do that. You can put in a line item for that. Uh, we make the note that you have to follow university guidelines and reflect relevant ethical and health and safety measures as you're doing this. Um, obviously, I mean, those of you who need IRB approval, you'll need IRB approval, but also should, you should be talking to your advisors about making sure that you're keeping yourself as well as anyone you're talking into the field in the field safe while you're doing your field work. Uh, and also you can put in, uh, you can request funds for connectivity issues for local research collaborator, collaborators and research partner organizations, that kind of thing. Uh, some people just paid for internet access really uh, for some of their interlocutors. Um, and that's something that you can ask for. But all of these allowed expenses, again, you'll notice none of these on this list uh, for this pandemic edition. These are not travel expenses. So you can ask for them, but they shouldn't be the majority of your budget. They should be smaller line items. Um, so, uh, the application, uh, I, hopefully you've all looked at our website and you see that it's there. There's an application form on the class website that you need to submit. And then there's a bunch of documents you'll upload to it, including your current transcript, which you can download from my.uchicago. It doesn't have to be your official transcript, a student transcript will do. Uh, you'll submit a narrative proposal, which is a two to five page description of your project. Uh, a trip itinerary and budget. There's a template for the budget on the class website. We'll take a look at what that's gonna look like in a minute. And then one letter of recommendation um, from a faculty member who is familiar with your project. Um, the narrative, uh, this is just a set of questions that you should be ready to, uh, to address in your narrative, how your research is engaging with a scholarship in your discipline, why it's important, what makes you qualified to do this research, why you need to do it now. Um, and then it's, it's really good to include the kinds of logistical preparations you've made or you're going to be make uh, to be successful in the field. And this includes things like, I'm all, you know, saying you're already in touch with certain scholars at a university there where you have contacts or different organizations that you're working with or that you will be getting in touch with them before you go. Um, really your narrative is your opportunity to tell the committee um, why, you know, about your project, why they should care about your project, why it's important in general, um, and, and why you're prepared to do it right now. Uh, this does not need to be, the narrative for the Tinker Field Research Grant does not need to be as, um, I guess, and as far along as your dissertation proposal would be or, or a proposal at a later point in your career, the committee is going to understand that you are early in your research process. So, you know, you still might have a lot more questions than you have information, you know, than, than answers at this time. Um, we know you're really early on, that's fine, but, but this is your chance to let a committee of people who are not all in your fields, uh, we have interdisciplinary faculty committees who make this decision, is to explain to them why your topic's important and why you need to be doing this research now. Um, so, you know, again, uh, these, these narratives go from two to five pages. We don't want them to be too long. You should be able to summarize pretty quickly uh, why this is important and, and you need to go do it. Um, and then other things you might want to include in the narrative include uh, evidence, like you basically want to state why you need to go to the field to do this work, why you can't just do it from the United States. Um, you know, this is not a hard thing to be able to justify for most of us. Uh, there's lots of things you can access in the field that you can't access from here, but, but including a sentence or two about that, I think is a good idea in the narrative. Um, if you have already emails or letters from people you'll be working with in the field that support the project, you can attach those to the narrative uh, or make reference to them. We've had people do both. That's always a good idea as well. Again, it shows that you've been preparing to do this work and that you have people who are willing to work with you on it. Um, and then noting that you have skill competencies, whether that be language, uh, methodological skills, whatever it is you have a background in that makes you ready to hit the ground running. 
uh, when you get to the field, again, including a sentence or two in your narrative about those is, is a good idea. Um, moving right along to the itinerary and budget. Uh, I've talked a little bit about these, but just going over them again. Let's see, no, sorry. Um, transportation costs. Uh, again, this is gonna be the vast majority, uh, actually not just transportation, transportation and the field costs together will be the vast majority of your budget. Airfare is usually a big ticket item. Um, when you're putting together your, your budget for the proposal, uh, you should be looking up airfares and be ready to attach a sample airfare that you found somewhere online, either directly on the on the airline's website or through you know Expedia or Orbitz or wherever you're finding a good airfare. So where did you get your airfare numbers from? Um, you can include taxi, Uber, bus, train, car rental or mileage. Um, and we make the note anything that gets you from point A to point B. Because in the past we've had people. Um, I specifically remember people in the Amazon and Brazil who need to take a private boat to their final field destination. And they're gonna go ahead and put that um, into, uh, and sometimes a horse <laughs> uh, to uh, put that into the budget that you submit to us. So basically all of the transportation costs you anticipate having, you wanna go ahead and list in your budget to us. Um, and then your allowable field costs include food, vi lodging, visas. This is gonna be a big chunk as well. Uh, and then research materials should be a smaller part of your budget. And then below, I, I mentioned all of the items we went over before in terms of what you can put in for your for the applications this year for software and hardware and other kinds of services. Um, for food, you can put in a per diem cost. Uh, we recommend you keep that reasonable if you are in the field for a month and you're renting an Airbnb with a kitchen and you tell us it costs you $50 a day to eat. Um, we're probably not going to believe that for any, you know, the faculty are going to look at that and go, wow, that's a little bit of a bloated budget. So uh, if you're putting in a per diem, we think most people probably somewhere between 20 and $30 a day is going to be okay for them to be eating while they're in the field. Um, again, it might depend if you're in one city for only a week and you're staying at a hotel, food that week might be a little bit more expensive, but, you know, don't, don't, don't puff up the cost just in an attempt to get more money. Uh, the faculty who review these applications have traveled all over the region and have a good idea of what that travel usually costs. And so, um, you know, you want to give us a reasonable budget for lodging. If you're looking at Airbnbs, this is also a place where showing us in the budget or attaching to your budget some, um, you know, a quote on an Airbnb. Um, that you're looking at so we can see what that nightly rate is, that kind of thing is good to attach uh, as well. Um, so that is that. And this is, uh, I took some screenshots of uh, the budget form that we ask you to submit. This is the budget that you will submit as part of your proposal. And it's the budget that you're going to update and submit after you get the grant and you come back and you're reporting on all of your expenses. It's the same Excel spreadsheet. Um, so we're going to want your dates of travel, the number of days you anticipate being gone. Right now, these are just estimates. You know, you, you do not have to travel on the exact dates you give us. Those can change later, but we have, we do want a realistic idea of how long you expect to be in the field. Um, and then, um, we want a little bit of your itinerary as to, um, by the way, this is one that I made up for 2022 where I dreamed I was going to Rio and Sao Paulo to do research. My background is in Brazilian studies, by the way, so I'm always dreaming of going to Brazil, among other places. Um, but so you'll see that first it's going, getting yourself to, you know, getting myself to Rio, and then I'm going to spend a couple weeks in Rio doing research at the National Archives and then go to Sao Paulo and then do some research in Sao Paulo and then back to Rio. So you want a little bit of detail in the top part of the budget as to where you're going and what dates you'll be there. And then what follows is uh, your estimates for the expenses you will have uh, per category. So you hear, first we start off with transportation, both airfare and direct ground transportation. Um, uh, and you'll see at the bottom here, you know, I said that my round trip from Chicago to Rio was going to be $1,130. Um, and uh, I looked up Delta was the best flight. Actually, this was not the best flight because there's two stops and I'd never want to take two stops to go to Rio, but whatever, this was the flight I looked at and this is the number I got. And so um, I attached this image to the proposal 
to show that that's where I got my airfare. And then um, a lot of the other ground transportation costs are, you know, I looked up what bus fare in Brazil is right now. I looked up, I get, got an idea of what the taxi from Rio, from the airport to my lodging would be. Um, and I came up with, with all of those kinds of figures um, to propose in the budget. Uh, and then the rest of the budget breaks down lodging and then research materials and expenses and then the meals are per diem. So uh, for lodging, as I went and looked up some Airbnbs and the neighborhoods I thought I would want to stay in, and to the right of the screen, you'll see um, what you'll see the costs that I've got reflected in the budget are are coming directly off of the Airbnb website. So I included evidence of where I arrived at those numbers. Uh, for research materials and related expenses, for this one, I just decided to make it really easy on myself and just say there's going to be copy fees and books, but this is where you would list. Um, subscriptions, any equipment you were buying, if you were paying subjects in the field, uh, paying for interpretation, all of those kinds of things would come under this general category of research materials and related expenses. And then the final category is the per diem. And you'll see I was, uh, I decided I could eat in Brazil on $15 a day for the for the 36 days I was going to be in the field. So um, that's how the budget is broken down. We try to make it as easy as possible for you to fill in the budget. Okay, and award requirements. Um, and should you be awarded, if should you be given the award, there's gonna be an orientation session and we're gonna remind you of all of these requirements later. So before you, before you travel, you're going to need to register with you, the UChicago Traveler Registry. Um, this is really important to us that you do this uh, because if there are any problems, this is how the university knows where you are. So um, in the past, sometimes there have been political issues in a country or a city somewhere where students have needed help getting out. Right now with the pandemic, it's just really important for the university to know if you're traveling internationally, where you are and what dates you're gonna be there. So once you finalize your travel dates, we ask that you register with the Chicago Traveler Registry so that we could find you if anything arises. Um, you'll attend the orientation session. We usually do that in May uh, before people start traveling in the summer. During the award, uh, we just need to note that you have to conduct a schedule of full-time research. You're not allowed to be doing coursework or language study while you're focusing on the Tinker Field Research Grant. It's supposed to be just you doing your field research. I already mentioned that the funds have to be spent by the end of the year. And then after the award, you will submit uh, uh, reports within 30 days of your return from the field. Um, and that 30-day deadline has to do with accounting at the university. Uh, this grant is awarded as, what, as a travel advance. So what happens is we give you, if we award you $2,000 before you even travel, we're gonna give you, we're gonna give you that $2,000. It's gonna get paid to you via check. And then when you get back, you need to report on how you spent that, that $2,000. And that must be done within 30 days for tax purposes. If you don't do it within 30 days, that money suddenly becomes taxable rather than covering travel. And that is not a situation you really want to find yourself in. So within 30 days of your return, um, you turn in a narrative report that's two to three pages long, uh, three to five photographs and captions, uh, and then your expenditure receipts and the expense report, uh, which I said, like I said, is the, the, the real push for why it has to be within 30 days. And then within nine months, or basically usually within the academic year following when you've traveled, uh, we ask that you present your work, your work at a public venue, whether that's a workshop here on campus, a conference, or another academic or community venue. And we're actually exploring um, I'm thinking of opening it up to where if you write for the class blog about your research or participate maybe in one of our podcast recordings that that's another public sharing of your work so it's not necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be a presentation style at a workshop or something, there might be other options but we do ask that you present your work. And then we're getting to the end, by the way, and then you can ask questions in a minute. Um, just a note, uh, and again you'll be reminded of this later that we ask that beneficiaries beneficiaries of this grant acknowledge the center and the Tinker Foundation in any public presentation, as well as any publication film or other public product that comes out of this work. Um, you know, so when you write that thesis or that dissertation, just note that the you know, class and the Tinker Foundation helped you with this work. Uh, and eventually, you know, in any books or articles that, that relate directly to the topic you did your work on. 
Um, actually, I have to say, I know faculty here at the university who got Tinkerfield research grants when they were doctoral students and they still talk about it and still thank the Tinker Foundation for that early support. So I think that's a lovely thing to see. And then finally, um, applications are due at noon on Friday, February 25th. Uh, and you can write to me uh, with questions or to the class at uchicago.edu email, which comes to both me and Mario. Uh, we make the application deadline at noon so that if you have any technical problems, there are still people here on campus who can help answer your questions and get you through that process. 